Live. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the North Dakota Safety Council's Chuck Roast, something we've all been eagerly awaiting and, and uh, sifting through the archives to come up with, uh, as I told Chuck earlier, a baseline of truth with a hint of satire, but everything you're hearing today <laughs> actually happened in some capacity. Um, we, uh, we are in the next hour going to be welcoming a lot of friends. Uh, I'm assuming they're all friends. There might be some people seeking vengeance and they might not necessarily be that, but they'll be coming here later on as well. Um, we, uh, uh, we're going to share some early history. What about the sponsors? Where, what about the sponsors? There you go. Takes a lot of, uh, of money to make this thing go around. And Chuck uh, has assembled a remarkable team at the North Dakota Safety Council. And they do a tremendous amount of good for the state of North Dakota, for industry, and making sure that, that uh, employees, employers, everyone are, are uh, completing their jobs with the greatest of safety. And, and so these sponsors help make this happen. Pucklich, American Crystal Sugar Company, I used to drive truck hauling beets into that plant, by the way. BNI Coal, in the winter of 1979, we played center uh, and we lost in overtime and we stayed at the Jacobs family, Wayland, Wayne and Roland Jacobs. We stayed at his family's house and his dad was the mine superintendent. And that was the first time I'd ever seen uh, big coal equipment. Anyway, thanks BNI Coal. Uh, the planning team, financial advisors, Doosan Bobcat. We have a Bobcat plugged in out in the garage. Um, and Aflac, Melissa Stewart. Thank you. So um, we'll start. Uh, so the, the uh, Giving Hearts Day, uh, if we help North Dakota Safety Council support the mission of preventing injuries, saving lives by donating, you can go to the, uh, the link that's shown here. And the sponsors are all uh, grouping up and they will match donations up to the first $3,600. And so please uh, be generous and, and um, contact them on how to uh, get your donation in today. So um, early history with Chuck. So to kind of set this whole thing up. So Chuck, as I would, I would assume, uh, what what middle school did you come through, Chuck? Simley. Simley, Simley Junior High. So I'm assuming Chuck was kind of a chosen one from early age and was <laughs> was nurtured and and uh, uh, encouraged to be uh, uh, as 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 he needed to be. And so uh, I would I would picture Chuck as an early star at Bismarck High, catered to as however they would cater back in those days. And so Chuck really never got, never, people never really messed with Chuck, I don't think. And so if they did, I think they discovered that uh, he, he has the, the, the patience of a rattlesnake. Uh, and, and went on through, uh, went on to college. Um, uh, choices here, you know, uh, if you go to the Fargo Dome and they have the long list of uh, NDSU football championships there. And if you look down, there's 1983. Uh, and I was on that team uh, that won a national championship in 1983. Uh, uh, something I don't know that Chuck really was able to say that you were, uh, uh, you played football <laughs> at UND, but I don't really know how that all ended up. But anyway, I was on the, I should clarify, I was on the sideline. I was a cheerleader yes, on the cheer please. team. Please clarify, because that's important to the comment. Uh, it's, a, it's a choice, Chuck. You made a choice. <laughs> it's a choice. Okay. So um, fast forward to I, the, probably the first time I would have met Chuck would have been playing basketball, City League. Well, not City League, because you were the upper league. And then keeping in mind that I was a dusty ranch kid from Slope County, uh, shot baskets truly on a plywood backboard on a gravel you know, driveway uh, and just kind of a rough and tumble guy. And so, of course, the first time that Chuck and I met, uh, I don't recall it, but I'm assuming it was not a very good, uh, it was not a very good encounter. 
uh, Chuck Standard line after he would get roughed up by someone, me, he'd turn around and just indignant, he would say, oh, that's so class B, so class B. So here comes the, you know, this is the, 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 the nurtured and fostered and, and yes, you're, you're going to be great someday. Uh, and so then what ended up happening, Chuck's evolution of playing basketball, they couldn't quite get over the hump uh, to get a, an amateur basketball title until he actually admitted uh, that Todd York was from Pheasanton. Was Todd York from Pheasanton? Yep. And yes. Kalen and Dean Gazelkin were from, from Goodrich, North Dakota. Uh, and uh, so those three Class B guys actually helped Chuck and his team get to the threshold of, of being actual amateur champions. And so uh, anyway, so that's that. So that's some of that history of where I would have met him. Uh, Jeff, if I can bring you in at this point to uh, talk about some stories uh, specific to your amateur days playing with Chuck. Yeah, I guess I have to chime in in the same way. Chuck and I had the opportunity to meet on the hardwood I had recently moved to Bismarck from Watford City with a very storied history of many state championships playing with Bitch and Bob's Bar. Moved to Watford City, or moved to Bismarck in 1996 and uh, had to find a team. So I knew a few guys from Miller Insulation, so I reached out to them and they didn't pick me up on waivers or on free agency. <laughs> so I made a few phone calls around Bismarck and then uh, was able to get a hold of Mark Hossauer and uh, join the team with those guys. So fast forward to the fall season at City League. And Ted, I, I was in the upper division, just so you know. It was, it was a legitimate. I'm playing in the upper division. <laughs> and I think Chuck was playing for Bud Light with Woody and a few other guys. And... Uh, Kind of one of my famous tags was I, I did wear a bandana. I was yeah. hair challenged back then, so I figured I may as well have something to keep the sweat out of my eyes. And we get out on the floor, and I matched up with Chuck, and we're on the baseline. He comes baseline. I just remember leaning and trying to push him out of bounds, you know, and make him go around, go out of bounds, post up on the other side. And I'm going, now, who in the heck have I encountered in this league? Somebody that I'm going to have to do battle with throughout the season and in many tournaments to come. Later that year, uh, the Dickinson Booster Tournament comes up and uh, neither one of us could field a full squad. So we kind of paired up our rosters. We went over to Dickinson and I had the opportunity to play with Chuck. And all I can say is we had fun. We played exactly the same type of game and we, and we went out and we had a blast and ended up winning the Blue Hawk Booster Tournament. Some stories. Well, that's how we got to know each other and have built a friendship and been able to work together for many years since then. But kind of going forward, uh, we're playing at, I believe we were playing at BHS. And there was a group of young guys from BHS graduated in the early 90s and probably starting to feel their oats. And uh, they were in the upper division and it was time to play. I'm not going to use any names, but <laughs> so we're playing a very, we're winning. We're playing a very physical game. I'm around half court standing at the three point line. And one of their players just comes up behind Chuck and just pancakes. Him. And I'm going, Oh my goodness. Have you picked the wrong person to pancake? So Chuck picks himself off the floor and uh, puts his hands around the scrawny guy's neck, you know, and by then the, the refs are pouring in. And of course, these kids, I'll call them kids, they're in their early 20s, their parents are at the game. Now, whose <laughs> parents comes to watch adults in an amateur basketball game? Hard enough to get my wife to come and watch, sometimes my kids, but parents. So immediately, I see out of the corner of my eye, one of the dads is going to engage in this, you know? So my job I took on right away was to go and keep the parents at bay and let the refs and let us as players kind of sort this out on the field. No assault charges were filed. 
pulses were calmed and uh, we went on and, and I don't ever remember even coming close to losing to this, that group of people, players. I add oh, one thing. Go ahead. But, but Rusty, the, the funny part, the, the even funnier part is you deadpan looked at the old guy and said, old man, you don't want no part of this. <laughs> Go and sit back down. It's not going to exactly well how it anyway. played out. Yeah. <laughs> and then yes. later on in our career, uh, just another story. I remember we were playing in Minot in the state am tournament. We were playing down at the auditorium, and I don't remember exactly who we were doing battle with, but it was a hard fought game. And there's this loose ball heading out of bounds, and anybody that's played with Chuck played with me that, you know, despite our size, despite our age, a loose ball is a loose ball. It's going to be a scrum. And we both are bolting for this loose ball. And all of a sudden I hear this crack and I'm thinking to myself, well, I hope that isn't my ankle, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then I look off to my right and there Chuck is in a crumpled heap. The ball rolls out of bounds. Neither one of us gets it, but he did get the short end of the stick there with a horribly sprained ankle i don't i don't remember if you ended up on crutches but you might have but it was just uh, another one of those times but we had a, a lot of adventures together great times in amateur basketball in our professional careers as well and uh yeah good times yeah thanks that was great great times not just good times <clears throat> and so chuck what do you remember about that incident getting drilled on the was that I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, we, it was actually a century. I have a little more vivid memory because maybe I was a little more invested, let's just say, in the play. Um, <laughs> we were in so North Court at Century, and we were playing a bunch of high school kids that, that just graduated from college and had won a high school state championship at Bismarck High. So, of course, they were – we were a bunch of old guys. And, of course, for us, they were just a bunch of young punks. And so, right, I kept – picking this kid and he didn't appreciate the idea that he didn't understand what a pick was because you know they didn't realize that you can you know screen somebody that wasn't in their vocabulary and so I kept screening him and of course I, obviously he didn't appreciate it and I went down the court and right he came from behind me and just blindsided me and so yeah I know I had a hold of him in his jersey and his neck and the whole process and I probably said to him you don't want any of this I would imagine that's probably one of the comments that's that was happened and and uh, cooler heads prevailed after Jeff toned the parents down. And I got a chance to maybe put my arm around this kid and say, you know, I'm going to tell you, you're fortunate that it was me that you maybe did that to because you, somebody else with, as my daughter said in the first roast, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a volcano, but I tend to, you know, calm down and, and uh, be a little more collected. And I put my arm, arm around the kid, I remember telling him just, you know, hey, it's a long year. And if you're, you're going to be doing that to somebody, you better make sure you pick the right guy because uh, I was fortunate to just grab you. The next guy's not going to do that. So um, we didn't have too many of those instances, uh, thankfully, but uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of fun times, Jeff. And um, bringing you guys together, I, I, my stories with you guys are ultimately, as you know, Ted, you talk about our teams, it's, it's more the line of, yes, I couldn't win a, a championship. And yes, I had to go recruit some Class B kids, which was – hurt me inside right but ultimately yes I brought some class b guys into the mix and uh five championships later we toasted a lot of uh state championships a lot of good times and it was a lot of the re results of I'm um, bringing in everybody um not just not just class a star basketball players it was the class b uh gritty bowman dirt floor backboard kind of guys we brought into the mix so and there's my son on there at my husband with the, the jacket. I, you're, Lisa, you're not muted. There we go. <laughs> Is this Lisa? Speaking of tech savvy, she's not. Let's just say. So. Oh, oh, so there's, Lisa. there's no time like the present to bring my quick Lisa story in. This is probably 15 years ago. And uh, good morning, Lisa. <laughs> she hears. She she can hear. She she can hear you. Yeah. Okay. She can hear, but she needs so, to unmute. Come on, Lisa. Get with the program. <laughs> Come on, join the program, Lisa. Come on, Tyler. Teach your mother how to use the damn computer. <laughs> so, uh, so this Hello, is. Hello, Ted. Here we go. Hello, Lisa. Welcome, and I have a nice, quick little story about okay. you. 
Okay. <laughs> so um, this is probably 15 years ago, and we uh, we were probably at a house party gathering or, or out out somewhere. Uh, my wife Jody, Chuck, uh, Lisa was there, and, and I don't remember who else was around us, but it was Here it had been getting on future. into the evening. Uh, on into the evening, and and so the uh, the uh, Lisa was just feeling feeling good. Let's say that. So she's you know having fun and smiling and laughing, and she said, "Ted, we need to go on a vacation." You know, we need to go on a vacation, and I looked at her and I said, "Is Chuck coming along?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chuck. It totally caught Lisa by surprise, little curveball there, and Chuck you know, looked at me, you know, in his in his indignant way. Anyway, it was uh, it was uh, anyway. Lisa was uh, the victim of a little joke there, and and um, but I always laughed about that. And so she does; she's not replying here. Uh, so my Tyler story. Um, hello, Tyler. You're from where are you? You're in Portland this morning. I am. And you're in what your third year of of uh, residency, or where are you at in your optom optometric career? Yeah, my second semester of my third year. Okay, and so then you'll start uh, you'll start doing work. You'll be doing rounds, or or what do they call that when you go clinic clinicals, something like that? Yeah, externships. Externships. Uh, well, anyway, congratulations. You've worked very hard. Uh, great job. Uh, you've been grinding it out uh, nonstop. You're a greater man than I. I took the most, my degree at NDSU. I graduated without honors in 1986 <laughs> with the degree in the path of least resistance and most fun. And I, I fully took advantage of all of that. Anyway, so I would like to think that I played a role in Tyler's selection um, of his uh, of his medical career, and I'll um, I'll show this up here. So Tyler's been coming out hunting uh, since he was probably about a freshman in high school. He drew a youth tag, <clears throat> and then they've been out on subsequent hunts after that. So you can see here. There we go. So that's Tyler, uh, the smaller guy. And that's me. You can't really see, but my pants uh, are down <laughs> past my buttocks. <laughs> and Tyler is extracting cactus uh, spears one at a time and going, oh, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> they, they were like embedded a quarter inch, a half inch. Something I always tell uh, rookies when they come out hunting in the Badlands is, you know, you're enjoying the serene beauty and and you find a great place to sit down and you always have to look if there's cactus and everybody sits in a cactus patch once. Well, unfortunately, I think in my career, I've sat in three of them and the worst one was with Chuck and Tyler. And so um, I sat down and I had a backpack on and it was kind of a, I, it was on a little bit of a slant. And so I leaned back and I couldn't go left or right. I had to. I had to lean forward, and it was just a disaster. And I had these nasty cactus barbs in my in my cheeks, so to speak. And so, anyway, we got home, and I and I said, "Okay, somebody's going to have to deal with this. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm out. <laughs> it ain't going to be me." <laughs> so we got Tyler, a player, a tweezer. And so for good lighting, I stood in the in the window there. And uh, uh, anyway, he was gracious enough to remove all these cactus barbs out of my butt. So fast forward to about two years ago, he's working at Dr. Hool's uh, 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 optometric place. And so there's the, you know, the receptionist, a couple of uh, uh, technicians were there. I think there was a new there was a couple of customers in the in the room or in the the open area and uh mike had just come in and and so talking to tyler so i i i thought it's a great time to do new material when no one knows who you are and so i, I told people i said i would like to think that i played a great role in tyler selecting uh his desire to be an optometrist uh and i went through the story of the cactus extraction and i said tyler decided to be in a career from the shoulders up and not from the waist down. And uh, so, 
please give some credit, Tyler, when you're giving the commencement address or something on your Uncle Ted providing direction for you. <laughs> Proctology was out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so on to the hunting thing. So Chuck, after uh, the basketball kind of wound down, I've always enjoyed, I was blessed, very blessed to be born into a family uh, that uh, I'm a third generation uh, to grow up on a ranch out in the Badlands, north and west of Amadon, about 17 miles, about 40 miles straight south of Medora, right on the Little Missouri River. The river runs 100 yards behind our house. And um, it's Badlands filled full of pine trees. And so it's a, uh, a bona fide working ranch. And, and so I've always, we've always welcomed the general public and I've always welcomed friends and, and uh, shared, the, shared the outdoors with them. And so it's always interesting when people come and there are different levels of, of uh, shall we say, expertise or experience um, dealing in the Badlands. And so Chuck had drawn a, uh, drawn a mule deer buck tag. And, I, and, the only, and the thing I tell people is you've got to know how your gun shoots and that it's damn sure sighted in because you're going to get one or two chances and that's going to be it. And so, um, so it was, you know, football season. Chuck's been on the air probably four nights a week or some number plus the job, plus all the other stuff. And so we, he gets out there on Friday night of the opener and is pulling out what I think was his grandfather's about 1950 version <laughs> pump 30 odd six with an old weaver one power scope it would be like driving a you know a 48 chevy and trying to compete at the indianapolis 500 or something i'm looking but of course chuck is chuck i'm not going to you know set the thing off on a negative tone i just all right i'll deal with it trust that the thing is you know set well anyway um shooting ensued shooting ensued and we unfortunately uh i'll spare the details but unfortunately we had to we had to we had to settle for a a a, a sausage buck we would call that and um so uh so fast forward okay so go back one so let's move that one go back to the coyote i have the the the, the coyote story okay so chuck is always you know super competitive guy and so you can kind of see um, size matters in the coyote business and the, and the, the coyote on the left, we shot on the way out. I shot him beautiful, big male. Chuck had not shot a coyote before. So, um, we're, we were at my brother's place for dinner one night. It's, <laughs> it's, wow. it's, it's after dark, which it is legal to shoot coyotes after dark. Um, and it is legal to shoot uh, as long as you're not in a vehicle. And so I will say those two things. It was after dark and he did not shoot out of the vehicle. So we're coming and here's the coyote running down the road. I go, Chuck, there's your coyote. And it was right before the, the cattle guard coming into the main ranch area. And there's a two track trail and I whip the lights around and there's the coyote standing right there, 70 yards away, Chuck gets out shoots the thing and it spins in a circle and and which they normally do when you shoot them and it runs into the runs into the sweet clover so we drive up there so keep in mind it's 10 o'clock at night and he shot what what is that was that a 243 that rifle 22 250 22 250 again it was another pump your grandfather liked pump or with clips with you yeah. know it's, i grew up with a bolt action it's always right there pumps jam and clips you can never find the clip when you want and so generally you have like one shot so chuck couldn't find the clip he got the one shot off winged it so now the hunt begins in the dark <laughs> so i said chuck don't because the, the the 22 to 50 made a big bang and and you don't like to create attention to yourself as my dad said when I was young, if you know you're doing something wrong, at least have the good judgment to stay off to the stay off the radar. So my Robert Lee Hansen is clicking in, but you had a seven. Was it a 17 caliber? Was it a 17? So Chuck has a smaller caliber rifle. I said, use that. It won't be. It won't make such big noise. So, and I'm I'm not really watching. I I know how it's going to end. And so Chuck um, shoots the thing, and it moves. 
and like it goes further. Now it crawls under the fence. So I got to help Chuck get over the fence. Here's this coyote thrashing around in the grass. And so I go, okay, I, I've just kind of walked away. I don't need to watch the end of this. And so then I hear this click. He was oh, out of bullets. He was out of bullets. And so anyway, <laughs> it, it ended up uh, Chuck's first coyote that he that he ended up uh, uh, taking uh, ended up in brutal hand to hand combat. And he finally endured. And and uh, on the screen is this this, uh, this small ratty looking coyote. But he was proud to have had his first. Uh, there would have been meat and meat and warmth in the village that night should it need to happen. So the theme here of these uh, uh, these shooting escapades. Uh, but now, so let's uh, so let's go on to that the 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 nice the good buck. So fast forward, this was what a year ago, Chuck, two years ago. Years ago, yeah. Year, yes. And so um, Ron, and by the way, Ron Polcheski uh, would have joined the Zoom call today, uh, but he it was a busy day at the bank, and he said Dakota Western Bank will be making a donation oh, to the nice. uh, to the North Dakota Safety Council. That's nice. That's awesome. Ron Polcheski is the local bank president. <clears throat> and so um, the story, uh, so we hiked, we were three and a half miles back in the stuff uh, by not that long. It was maybe daylight for an hour or so, a couple hours. And, uh, and so we're, we're tired. Um, and in fact, one second, one second, I got to get one prop. Ted, the storyteller. <laughs> so we, so you can see this is a big mule deer. So we sat down. I was eating my morning sandwich, and I saw this antler about fifty yards away. I said, "Oh, it's good. It's good. Good juju. We're going to have good luck here." And it wasn't five minutes later, and here this bruiser shows up. And the unfortunate part about it is when he disappeared, we had to probably go another half a mile further from the truck. And long story short, uh, at 411 yards, uh, Chuck had a big boy gun. What you had, you had a brand new gun, you had a brand new scope, you were all outfitted. Anyway, Chuck harvested what really is a once in a lifetime animal beautiful mule deer buck. I've hunted mule deer for 40 years and I've not got one that size. And so anyway, so then we had to call the neighbor. Uh, it was either, I mean, we had, we were three and a half miles in. It was either bone the thing out and carry it all out or call this neighbor that doesn't necessarily like visitors in and around. And we were on state land. It was all legal. So um, Ron, the bank president is with us. Chuck goes, yep, we'll pay him whatever. So we, so we, I call the guy, he comes and gets us and I can see he's agitated, but he helps us out nonetheless and on the way out. So then uh, the father-in-law comes and uh, he's a cantankerous guy as well. And anyway, as we finally left and we had Chuck's deer in the back of the truck, the bank president said, well, I think I just lost five customers today. <laughs> At the hands of Chuck, because we we had elicited son-in-law, his wife had a business, the father. Uh, anyway, it's a long, convoluted story, but we we retrieved the animal, and um, I don't know. Do you? Uh, well, speaking of the taxidermist, that you're, did you have to rough the taxidermist up to I, get your head back? Ted, I still don't have it. No, I. That's that's a that's a sore subject. Let's not bring that one up. Hopefully, I still get to see that deer mount. Oh. So uh, anyway, so that's uh, so those are some money stories. Can we bring on the uh, let's bring on the Sports Illustrated, Chuck? There's a lot going on in this uh, sport. You did any of you get this? The, the, any of your family get Sports Illustrated? Did you get the special edition? Anyone on the screen? So I've seen, I've seen pictures of it. That's enough. <laughs> so I went and watched, I was like taking pictures. And so I went to watch Chuck play one night and this is, uh, 
uh, I don't know how many years ago. You probably played about one more year, but you can see the hair is gray. Uh, but that's how Chuck played. Exactly. Yeah, exactly like that. And I'm the class B guy because I was fighting back that kind of BS. <laughs> it's all right there. And then when the ref calls the foul, look at look at him talking. What what was that ref? What was that ref's name? I can't see it from here. So <laughs> long, long time ref. And that's exactly how how did you not see it? Are you and and Chuck would routinely drop f bombs on the you know how did you not hey, hey. see that? <laughs> so so the headline: Claremont retires, refs, players, and parents relieved. And of course the uh, the the Jordan factor. This was the local Claremont factor. The Sanford bone and joint caseload went down when Claremont retired. People's limbs were staying intact longer and yeah and then they they changed the rules citing new rules regarding body checking and hands to the face i so see no reason to go on a quote direct quote from Chuck claremont i don't think it was quite like that but yes yes there's probably more reasons than than that to get out of uh, that that photo is not that photo was not photoshopped that's an actual uh, photo and then of course he being a cpa and accountant background there was never enough money in it for him and so the fertile on team owner uh joe sart the local lawn care magnet wouldn't renew his contract he apparently only wanted to play defense or he only wanted to play offense he didn't want to go both ways which was not at all uncommon either chuck pictures don't lie buddy <laughs> Let's just say the guy was battling against his nickname was he had a twin brother. He was six, eight and uh, not a good basketball player, but was relentless. So we called them the welders. And so I wish Todd Domries was on this call. So that was, that was their nicknames. This guy would go a hundred miles an hour nonstop. And uh, yeah, it was every time we played him, I hated playing against that guy because no matter made missed, he, he wouldn't stop. I mean, I, I, I applauded him because of his effort, but it was made for a long day. Let's just say it made for it made for the first cold one that much more enjoyable when the day was over after I played that guy. <laughs> so this was the article that uh, was included in the special edition Sports Illustrated. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any highlights in there. Um, so the yeah the class B guys so the Goodrich, the Goodrich guys Kalen and Dean Gazelkin and Dean Gazelkin uh, is in the Amateur Basketball Hall of Fame. I think nominated by you, Chuck. Yeah. So is, so is Jeff Rust who's on and the Rusty. Here. I was going to say is Rusty. We're in, so we're in the presence of some Hall of Famers. Chuck, are you in the Hall of Fame? I'm actually was supposed to go in last year, but they of course COVID hit. So now this year, um, they're going to, Todd Dombries and I are going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, thanks to Jeff or, and Dean, I think, were the ones that nominated me. So that was nice. That'll be pretty cool. Likely story. Blame it on COVID, Chuck. <laughs> you, see a <laughs> you see an incestuous pattern here? Chuck nominated <laughs> Dean and Jeff. Right. They get in. So then they nominate Chuck to get in. Right. So right. <laughs> We earned it, Ted. Let's just say, let's just say I could nominate you and there's a good chance you wouldn't get in. <laughs> uh, that's true. I'm just giving you crap. I was a push pull and I, you know, I do have to tell a good story. Speaking of that, you know, uh, I did, I did learn that recruiting quality players was important. Okay. And so you and I had these battles, Ted, back and forth that, that the battles, I mean, they usually lasted about 10 minutes into the first half because you fouled out early and uh so I mean, it would it play to the i would play to i would play to the level till the ref i would make the ref make the call and if he didn't make the call i just kept ramping it up you did so the good thing i mean for you is you never got to play a lot because you didn't you know you fouled out all the time so but i you know i love playing with you i love your your intensity so we actually got you on our team which was awesome i got to be a manager a co-manager with brad joseph we got you on the team and the first year I don't know if you hit double digits on points total. So we actually got together as a team. You don't know this. And there was a team vote. If we were going to keep you on, if we we're going to pick somebody else up, it was an eight to one vote. We voted you off the team, but Brad Josart had the final, the final vote. And as the manager, he said, as long as Ted continues with his 
mid-season parties or he pays for all the, the refreshments and he makes his guacamole. We're going to keep him on the team, Ted. So two years later, you still run the team. So I don't know if you knew that, but it's just one of those things that, you know, you, you, you get stuck on. We stuck with you. It, 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 all, it all sounds contrived and suspicious, but in today's world, I, I, wouldn't, doubt, uh, I wouldn't doubt that. Um, yes, we, uh, uh, yeah, well, I was famous. I was always a very gracious host, good host, and was glad to have friends come over. There weren't many that did come over. So there's some early, uh, some early photos, um, uh, probably shooting an obvious air ball there from the free throw line. See, he's leaning, trying to wish it in. So did you ever win a game at the end, Chuck? Um, no, the last game I, my sophomore year, hit a game-winning basket that I thought, and then that, I'm Tracy Brumfeld from West Fargo. I think that's the actual game, if I recall. If I, if I, I can't see the photo. I think that's the, the shot I hit with 11 seconds as a sophomore at the state championship in Minot. I made it. Um, had other seniors probably screaming at me saying um, some – language that we can't repeat on this PG 13 roast, but I made it. And all of a sudden they were my friends. And then uh, ultimately Tracy Brumfeld, who actually works for the North Dakota safety council, he does defensive driver training for us. And unfortunately I hear from him every year. He calls me around March and reminds me of who won that state championship in, uh, in 1983. And it was him hitting a last second shot. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Great story. Uh, so that appears to be a free throw. Did you hit a, was it a jumper or some free throws? I, I can't see the, the shot exactly. That's I, a free that's throw. What, that's a free throw. So that's, that's, a different, that's a different photo, but um, yeah. Jeff, you seem like you got something to say. <laughs> no, I'm just observing. Okay. <laughs> I played at Harvey and I was still class A, so I couldn't, but I competed against the Gazelchen boys up in that area of North Dakota. Yep. Both on the street and in the gym. Yeah. All right, Ted, so, here we go. <laughs> so it's time to transition into, uh, let's talk college football. So as you can see behind me uh, is the bison battle shaft, complete with a uh, bison pom-pom on the end of it. Uh, that incidentally is a uh, dried 33-inch long buffalo unit. <laughs> Jeez. And so, we, and so uh, with my family, we used to raise buffalo here, bison, and so collected a lot of uh, artifacts that fell off, uh, got cut off, whatever. And so this was my outfit down in Frisco uh, a year ago, and my brother has a big bison, uh, huge coat, and it was, it was quite entertaining, and uh, NDSU went on to, uh, to beat James Madison. But so, Chuck, let's go back to your time at UND. Uh, and talk about some epic battles you had with the bison in the trenches and how that, how'd that all go for you? Well, the first three years didn't go so well, but the last year, I mean, we, we wait, were, wait. Let, let's go oh, back but, to the, but, let's go back to the first three years that didn't go to, a, I'm, I'm interested in that as yes, are everyone was, else. The bison. Yes, they did win two national championships. Uh, my, I don't know if it was my, freshman and junior years potentially if i recall and um, so you were you were an offensive lineman what were your height weight stats as an old lineman i was well six four about 225 as a freshman then 245 <laughs> as a sophomore and about and maybe by the time i was a senior probably 270 and that's about that was kind of the playing size of everyone back in those days yep Unfortunately, I'm at my playing weight now. Let's just say so. That's not a good. That's not a good program. <laughs> you have to get that jacket taken out, Chuck. Uh, yeah, apparently it was when I was a freshman. Yes, uh -huh. I need to. I need to take the jacket out a little bit. It's a little tight. <laughs> and so let's. Okay, so let's talk about your senior year. How did it all go then? No, we ended up losing to the buys in 34-27, but uh, battled against the. Um, you know, the, some of the All-Americans with the NDSU, we had a chance to drive down at the end of the game and tie it. And unfortunately, uh, the, the other offensive guard gave up a sack to an All-American and uh, went on to play for the Buffalo Bills, Phil Hansen. Phil and Hansen. He had, yeah, that was the last game of my senior, my, my career. Was that, was that 
Was that in the playoffs? Was that in the playoffs? That was, that was, that was to get to the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, to get to the playoffs. Then and the ECU, I think actually, I think they went on to win the national championship that year. So. And do you have other UND uh, football teammates on the chat right now? I don't think there is any that I can see. No, I, I see uh, no, nobody's, there's no football players on right now. Okay. No. All right. All right. You know, before we close out, Ted, I mean, I know we're near, narrowing that or nearing that time, but I have to say, you know, this is a roast of me, but it's also an appeal for your wife. I know she called me and said that uh, we're, we're looking to get you a job potentially, you know, getting you a, a, a job. She, so she said, can you please appeal to those people? On, Be, get, on, getting <laughs> me, me a job? <laughs> we need to I don't like five job. of them. <laughs> they just don't pay very, they just don't pay very well. And so uh, what I'm, I, my understanding is uh, in the last, you know, several years, you've been a really good bus driver. So for the safety council, I know you could maybe teach bus driver, you know, for, for governor Burgum's, you know, the, the bus that drove around the, the state. It was, you were, you were, it was the, it was the Burgum Dreamliner Express. And I was uh, at the wheel, man. Yes. Yeah, so I, know, I know. So Kirk Olson with Harlow is we, we should have had him join as well. Cause he probably could have got you a job as a bus driver at Harlow's, you know, that's potential. And you did such a good job pounding in all the signage for governor Burgum that Dakota fence I heard was looking too. that there's a potential we can get you on the Dakota fence, putting up uh, fence posts. Uh, those, oh, uh, no, <laughs> that's all learned on the fence line at the logging camp, but continue your attempts here. I mean, I'm entertained. <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. You, you you look so good in your helmet there. I want you to keep going. Well, I also, uh, I was 33 years in the sales world and I was done. I was at the end, I was done chasing the deal. And I decided I was going to do things that were uh, fulfilling uh, to me and perhaps uh, all of the uh, wrong roads I took in my life. Perhaps I could use it to mentor youth to have perhaps not go the roads, the paths that I took. Um, and so I, uh, and then I enjoy roughing. I was, a I, I haven't got run out of a gym. We haven't had to leave, uh, out any back doors yet, but, uh, so I was, I was, uh, substitute teaching. I was driving a semi and I was refereeing until COVID came. And then all of my, my, uh, idyllic lifestyle kind of ended. And so, um, I've been uh, about kind of half time out here on my family's ranch, helping my dad and and the family. Uh, and so, Chuck, I don't have time for a full time job. <laughs> hey, I, I, I know I did somehow. I didn't mean to twist this back on you, Ted. This isn't a Ted Hansen roast, but I just thought that I, as I had a, a few minutes before we close, I had, I had to get my jab back in at you, you know, because you know you've been you've been tough on me so far today. Well, well, yeah, it could have been tougher. I did leave a few things out, which I'm sure there's probably about as much stuff left out as got divulged today, but it's best leaving those uh, sleeping dogs lie. So I don't know if Tyler got a chance to, you know, Carly got a chance to hit me up earlier today. So I don't know if my son has anything, any good, uh, any good roasts to make on me or not. I do have one picture here I can share. Can we see this one? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So Carly always wanted a pool here. And so they, of course, they ended up buying one because Carly gets what she wants. <laughs> and so the only person that would use a pool is him. And the only one that would clean the pool is him. But as you can tell, he kind of fell fell behind on the cleaning of the pool there. So he just decided to hop in and enjoy the moldy green water. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good time. I, speaking of that pool, it's for sale. Who <laughs> yeah. needs a pool? <laughs> I still have it in the storage room. Ted, it might be in the it, ranch. Is it still in that condition? I think <laughs> yeah. we'll leave it there. It's still got some green in it for you, Jeff. <laughs> Does it come with the guy floating on it? <laughs> yeah. It does not. <laughs> if it does, I'm out. <laughs> it provides a new definition, a new level of pool boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't have pool a truck boy. big enough to bring that away. 
<laughs> yeah, Kristen. Yeah, the next time you're in the meeting, yeah, hey, pool boy, come up here. <laughs> That'll be my new terminology, I'm sure. I'm sure work has a lot of a lot of cute phrases for me. Pool boy has not been one of them. Let's just say. <laughs> not yet. Well, so, um, not so, yet. uh. So to, to wrap up, I, I, I don't have my notes in front of me, but to wrap up, are there some other things? Uh, Here you go, Ted. Yeah, so um, to uh, reiterate uh, the importance of the support for the, the Safety Council, Chuck, I mean, all, you know, kind of funniness aside, Chuck uh, truly is a passionate guy uh, and and you know, as he plays, you know, plays uh, on the competitive field, whether it was football or basketball, played with such great passion. And those are the same qualities that you bring to your work every day, Chuck. And I think you surround yourself uh, with a diverse uh, group of people there that are committed to the same goal of uh, creating safe work environments and the importance of doing that. And it doesn't just happen. And so. Um, it takes a lot of money, takes a lot of cooperation. And Chuck, when you started at the Safety Council, how many employees did you have? I think we had four. And and pre-COVID, when you were when you were really going, what were you at your peak? Well, we're fortunate that we haven't we still have the same amount pre-COVID. So it's that's not we're we're probably at you know 25 to 27 full time and and 35 total. But as I've said many times, it's not it's not how many people are working here. It's how many lives we get to touch. And that's the cool part is while it may have been 10,000 when I first started, we're, we've been fortunate to get in front of close to 50,000 people every year. So that's the cool, that's the really cool thing. It's not about how many people that are here, even though that the people that are here are phenomenal uh, people who, have, who put so many hours of work um, into making, you know, this mission a reality of saving lives and preventing injuries. It really is how many people we've been able to touch. And that's the cool part, Ted, over the last, Oh, 14 years, I think, that I've been here, that's, um, there's been a lot of lives we've been able to uh, get in front of and hopefully hopefully change for the better. Well, congratulations to you and uh, a great job on assembling a great team and, and providing great value for employers and employees in the state of North Dakota. And so a thank you to the stadium and the lodge uh, for donating the proceeds from the Chuck Roast Philly promotion. By the way, was it you, Chuck? Did you say it was Linnea that had the that won the naming? Uh, well, Linnea, she, she, Linnea's on right now, and Linnea's she not just the naming. This was her whole idea. So um, well, I, sure. I don't know if I I don't know if I can thank her or not because uh, yeah, by the end of the day, I might have some scars. Let's just say, but yes, she uh, she it was her her idea. I don't know how you came up with it, Linnea. You haven't told me the whole story yet, but well. Uh, Coming, uh, I spent 15 years in the ad agency world and, and worked around a lot of very creative people. And so to, to convey the message uh, as clearly as possible with the fewest amount of words and, and catch people's attention and make them, uh, make them chuckle, that's bad, uh, make them laugh, uh, you did it in two words, outstanding. And, and the amount of work that everyone did to make this possible, um, uh, and there was there was I'm sure a lot of more hours than you anticipated putting into it. And so, anyway, I wish you well on the day, and hopefully you'll uh, meet your goals. Uh, um, I'll be making a donation as well. I got to get connected on that. Uh, um, but anyway, thank you. It was an honor to be chosen to uh, carry part of the show, part of the roast. And I thank you and, and Chuck, uh, great job, Kristen, everyone there. Uh, have a good day and a, and a good 2021. And, and uh, let's uh, resume our life as we once got to it. So with that. Awesome. Thanks, Ted. Have thank a great you, Ted. day, everyone. <laughs>